Hi, and welcome back. In this video, we continue to work on our Guppy project to restore a line that consistently produces a solid white color trait. We will carry on with our back crosses using the female offspring from cross number one. If you are new here, my name is Ivan. My first goal on this channel is to challenge myself to fix a guppy color trait by starting with only one male and four females. Our male, we named Gandalf, is the only one of the five that has the physical white color characteristic that we are after. If you haven't seen those initial crosses yet, I recommend checking them out because they pave the way for the next set of crosses. And you might be interested in seeing that we've already started seeing some progress from the results of cross number five, but cross number one will be the most relevant for this video. Cross one involved a gray-based female guppy that resulted in all gray-based offspring. This means that genetically, they are heterozygous for that base body color trait. They inherited a recessive blonde-based body color from their father, Gandalf, and a dominant gray-based body color from their mother. When the offspring were still young, I carefully separated the males from the females. In this way, I kept the females virgin before continuing with my next cross. The offspring from cross one did not show any of the white color that Gandalf had. This was expected, but interestingly, this brood had females with two different phenotypes. One that had a red tail, and one that had a clear but sometimes darker yellow-gray tail. To prepare for the next cross, I decided to back cross each of these females to Gandalf. Two reds and two yellow grays. What you see now are how these females look today, together with their offspring. We will talk about the fry in a little bit. These crosses will be labeled as six and seven. By the way, I loosely number my crosses in the order that I see females drop their fry. The females with the red tails here dropped fry before the yellow gray ones. Therefore, I numbered the brood from the red tailed females as cross number six, and cross number seven will reference the yellow gray tailed females. Gandalf and cross number one females were together for just under a month before they started dropping fry. I kept the females together with their offspring for several drops to gather as many offspring as I reasonably could. Because I am interested in looking at the percentages of offspring that inherit certain traits, higher numbers of offspring make the data more reliable. It makes outliers easier to spot and trends clearer. With that being said, we won't be getting too in-depth with the color genetics in this video as the fry are still rather young. So far, the red-tailed females dropped more fry than the yellow-black females. Something that we could immediately see though is that both broods have a mix of blonde-based and gray-based guppies. This was expected. Let's do a quick Punnett square analysis. Like I said earlier, the offspring from cross number one carry a gray-based and blonde-based body color trait, making them heterozygous. So, I will treat both our females here the same. Back crossing them to Gandalf, who is homozygous blonde based, will produce offspring that have a 50% chance of turning out blonde or gray based. Any gray based guppies here will again be heterozygous for this trait. This is exactly what we see happening. I have not counted all the guppies yet, so I don't know how close we are to the 50% mark, but I imagine that it is close. I started separating some of the males out of the broods. The males from the red-tailed females are further along in their development and are showing more color than the males from the yellow-gray females. Because there are several genes that will likely play a role here, I'm excited to see how these guys will turn out. In addition to the blonde or gray-based body color, these are the genes that I think will be relevant. Magenta, Storzbach, also known as Metallicus, and European Blau. I talked about the Blau gene in my previous video, and I plan on introducing Magenta and Storzbach when we return to see the progress on cross number five. 
FYI, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing Storzbach right, but we'll just go with it at the moment. The brood in cross number six also has a half black gene that can be inherited from their mothers. And I talked about this gene in my video on cross number four. So I expect that cross number six will be a rather mixed bag of guppies compared to cross number seven. Because of this, I think that it would make more sense to make update videos on cross number seven before cross number six. Then the distribution of the half black gene should be the only main difference when comparing the two broods. Moving forward, these crosses will be separated into individual videos. If you are interested in following along to see our progress, please consider sticking around. I still have virgin females from crosses two and four, and we will be introducing them to Gandalf in the next video. It will be a short video, but these females will be the final guppies I have planned to back cross with Gandalf. These will be crosses numbers eight and nine. We will then continue to circle back and look at the developmental progress of the fry as they get older, starting with cross five. See you next time.